Yeah, excited to be here. Excited to share uh, this material with you uh, and, and with everyone here. And um, yeah, hoping for a good talk. Uh, so I, I think Nicholas covered most of this. Uh, yeah, the, the topic is going to be uh, launch services for, for specifically small SAT customers, um, how these are becoming sort of more flexible, more dedicated, more responsive, the technologies that, that are sort of bringing this to customers. Um, you know, across uh, launch services and, and other things like orbital transfer vehicles, which we'll talk about today. Um, yeah, my name is Evan Lerner. I'm a product manager at Spaceflight, uh, mainly focused on our Sherpa orbital transfer vehicle, but also on all the products that Spaceflight uh, is able to uh, provide for its customers. Um, for an introduction, uh, I, I think some key context here, as well as um, some useful definitions, but before we start getting, you know, maybe a little too technical, um, Without these. Uh, so, Spaceflight, we're a premier uh, global launch service provider. We're a trusted partner across the industry, uh, and we're a pioneer in rideshare and in space transportation. Um, today, we'll be focusing on specifically in space transportation, uh, looking at orbital transfer vehicles and sort of within the context of rideshare and launch services. Uh, some key definitions before we get started, um, some things that, that may have been uh, not very clear if, if we hadn't defined them uh, right here uh, orbital launch services. Um, so this, this can be pretty broad. Uh, it's going to be everything involved in delivering something, an object, uh, to space. This can include uh, operations, mission management, licensing, logistics, payload integration, launch assembly, launch infrastructure, and, uh, and a lot of other things as well. Um, within launch, uh, sort of like a subsegment of it is going to be rideshare. Uh, this is not, you know, the, the primary satellites, um, you know, that, that are sort of purchasing uh, a lot of capacity on uh, launch vehicles. This is sort of that, that leftover capacity. That's being sold off to uh, small sats or other small uh, satellite customers. Um, this is relatively new in the space industry, uh, and it opens up uh, space to a lot more customers. And it's sort of what's driving a lot of growth in the space industry today. Um, this offers space at a, at a lower cost to a lot of customers, um, but it also offers space sort of with, with less control on, a, on schedule and, and sort of where you're going, um, which is a key place for orbital transfer vehicles, as, as we'll talk about soon. Um, to define small sat, we, we've already said it a lot and it's been talked about a lot today, um, but we're going to define this as satellites that are small in mass and size. Uh, definitions are, are very flexible and tend to vary. We'll just define this as satellites under a thousand kilograms. Um, yeah, uh, they're particularly well suited for rideshare because they fit in that, in that excess capacity. And this is a core uh, market for the topics that we'll be talking about today for that reason and, and also for the reason that they fit very well on orbital transfer vehicles. Um, what are orbital transfer vehicles? These are maneuverable host vehicles. You're able to see one of these um, to, to the right here in this uh, in this figure. This is actually a Sherpa orbital transfer vehicle. This is built by Spaceflight. Um, these are uh, typically maneuverable that they can carry satellites, as as you can see in this figure. Um, uh, so you know this this will sort of mount on a launch vehicle. It, it it will deploy like a satellite would deploy, and then it'll it can maneuver to another orbit and deploy additional satellites from it. Um, yeah, and, and then beyond that, they're all able to provide additional services uh, from that point forward, which we'll talk about uh, later today. Some services um, worth mentioning now uh, within that in-space services uh, market or area. Um, this is sort of anything that, that can service objects once they're in space. This includes payload hosting and operations, which uh, Sherpa actually currently offers. Um, we'll talk more about that as well. Uh, this is you know the orbital transfer vehicle going up um, and sort of operating its, its payloads that, that are attached once it's in space. Then there's many other services that uh, vehicles can provide or be provided uh, once in space, uh, including you know, various kinds of servicing, robotics, assembly and manufacturing, relocation and life extension, refueling, debris removal, deorbit, and, and others. Um, one thing I, I wanted to sort of cover and, and define before we got more into, uh, into this topic is sort of access to space, because I think this is a very key definition and, and some key context um, for you know, launch and, and OTVs and all of this and, and how they all fit in to, to space today. Um, so I think it's important to sort of show how access to space is evolving um, and then sort of, you know, how this, this shifting of uh, sort of transportation and, and maneuvering responsibility, how this is shifting from um, satellites that, that, that are trying to access space to, to providers throughout the um, market so that customers are able to focus more on their satellites, more on their payloads and, and their missions and, and, and less on everything about getting to and from and, and around in space. Um, so access to space started with primary launch. Um, at, at the beginning of this, customers had to buy a launch vehicle, pr procure a launch, um, and sort of get to space entirely on their own. And then once they were there, it was up to them to maneuver around and to get out of space once their mission is over. Um, so a lot of responsibility on customers. 
This is now shifting. Um, most recently with rideshare, uh, you know, adding additional um, access to space with, with, that, with that additional capacity, uh, making space a little bit more accessible and more affordable for customers. Um, so a lot of responsibility on maneuvering and getting out of space, but at least it was a lot easier to get to space. Um, currently we're at OTVs. Uh, these are now taking us from, you know, being able to get to space with rideshare at a more affordable cost, but not really being able to control where you're going. Now with an orbital transfer vehicle, you can one, get there on rideshare, but now you're also able to maneuver to a specific orbit um, somewhere that, that you'd really like to be re rather than somewhere that, that you're able to just go to because someone else is going there. Um, so there's a lot more flexibility on top of that affordability uh, because of OTVs, but you still have responsibility to do orbit. Um, at the end here, we're getting to in-space services. Um, so now we're, we're sort of going from space has become more affordable, it's become uh, more flexible in, in terms of access where you're able to go at that affordable price. Uh, and, and now it's sort of with in-space services with uh, vehicles that are already in space that are able to uh, take you from point to point uh, deorbit you, uh, perform various operations on you, you are really just responsible for, for doing what you want in space and, and a vehicle is able to take you around, get you out of space, get you there. They can do everything for you. So this is entirely shifted to services from a lot of responsibility on customers at the beginning. Um, so I think that's some, some good context, a, a good introduction to this topic. Uh, the agenda for today, will introduce space flight. We'll talk a little bit more about orbital launch services and transfer vehicles. Um, we'll introduce the Sherpa OTV as, as a good example and, and, and sort of um, case uh, to, to talk about the various services that OTVs are providing and sort of how they're providing access to customers. And then we'll explore some use cases and then we'll consider uh, frontiers or sort of what's next within, within this area. And, and last, we'll have some time for questions at the end. Uh, here's an overview of spaceflight. Um, so I, I, th I think some key things to call out. Uh, spaceflight has a lot of experience in the industry. We've been doing rideshare for over 10 years. We have flown 55 missions. We've launched 463 satellites on these missions on 17 different launch vehicles. Um, this includes rideshare to geo and cislunar space. In the last two years, we've been very active. We've done 20 missions, launched 148 satellites on five different launch vehicles from three different continents. Uh, this year, we're sort of keeping up that pace. We have 10 launches across our launch vehicle portfolio. The next one is Rocket Lab or on Rocket Lab. Uh, the beat goes on. This will have uh, two of our customers on it, and this should be happening in the next week. After that, we have Transporter 7, which is out of Vandenberg, uh, with six customers or six satellites. Uh, one other thing to call out, we're adding more launch vehicles. While we already have a very large launch vehicle portfolio, uh, we're expanding this. Um, some of those companies that we're adding are, are listed here. I think we have uh, about eight listed at the bottom there. Uh, one other thing to call out uh, early on or, or sort of to um, you know, make sure that space flight is understood and sort of why we do the things we do and off offer the services that we offer. Uh, we are hyper-focused on getting pretty much anyone or anybody to space. Um, and we're not just trying to offer access to space, we're trying to offer uh, access to space for, for people exactly where they wanna go and exactly when they want uh, to go there. So we're trying to offer sort of precise uh, access and, 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 and everything else um, that, that we'll talk about later. Uh, one other thing to mention, or I guess to, uh, to dive a little bit more into Space Flight's experience here, um, we've talked a little bit about uh, you know, the, the number of missions that we've done, the number of satellites we've launched. Uh, we have extensive experience here. Um, you know, we've, we've done all different kinds of capacity, purchasing full rockets, partial purchases. Uh, we have a lot of experience sort of across the, the entire like engineering and, and integration uh, segments. Um, one key mission to call out, SSOA. Um, this was uh, a huge mission for space flight. This was um, the uh, premiere of uh, Sherpa, the Sherpa Orbital Transfer Vehicle that we'll talk more about later. Um, this was also really uh, for Spaceflight the, the, the start of uh, rideshare. Um, so this, this was huge uh, for us. Uh, we procured a whole launch vehicle. Um, we had upper and lower pre-flying spacecraft Sherpa FXs. Um, the upper one had uh, 20 uh, satellites on it and the lower one had 40. Um, one other thing to call out, uh, Spaceflight's uh, first commercial, or Spaceflight was responsible for the first commercial rideshare mission to GEO and Lunar, uh, both listed here. Um, so sort of a lot of firsts for Spaceflight within the industry. Um, and we've pretty much always been at the cutting edge and, and we, we will continue to be. Uh, one other thing to call out is uh, the flexibility from our partners or our, our launch vehicle portfolio. Uh, Spaceflight serves as your interface to launch service providers. Um, we connect you to sort of all these launch vehicles and, and we are your point, point person. Um, for them. Uh, we have a very large portfolio. This is expanding. Some of our, our launch uh, launch vehicles or launch uh, service riders are, are listed here. Um, these include SpaceX, um, 
NSIL, Rocket Lab, Arion Space, et cetera. Um, we've launched with five different launch vehicles from three different continents in the last few years. We talked, talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, and sort of the way that we, we optimize launch selection, preparation, integration provides a lot of value to our customers. Um, the flexibility that, that we have, uh, this converts for our customers into a launch schedule, flexibility, a flexibility on cost, location, destination, and risk profile. And this also reduces effort, time, and risk for both us, and we pass it on to our customers, reducing the same. Um, this is enabled by you know, a lot of things that, that are sort of core to spaceflight, including our relationships, our diverse portfolio of launch providers, um, our you know, sort of integration capabilities, uh, the hardware that we have, our licensing, logistics management, as well as our extensive mission management expertise. Uh, the value we bring to our customers uh, is sort of, there, there's a lot of value we bring to our customers, but some of the things to call out here um, are on sort of the experience and trust that, that our customers have um, in us, uh, the choices we offer, how we help our customers navigate all these options, um, our ability to provide services and all the friction points that we've identified throughout this process, and sort of offering, you know, like a complete mission solution to our customers, um, helping them along the whole way. Uh, to talk a bit more to sort of that complete solution, this is a list of you know all the services that we provide um, end to end to our customers. We we really do provide an, an entire uh, product here for them. To call out a few things, um, or to call out some key words here, uh, this this sort of is across launch, uh, engineering services, integration services, uh, hardware that, that that we provide, licensing, logistics management, mission management, um, remanifest support, uh, which is of huge value to our customers. Uh, mission assurance, including with uh, cameras on our Sherpa orbital transfer vehicles. Um, and then many add-on services to sort of make sure that all of our customers, regardless of who they are and, and you know how many needs they have, are always met. Um, they also have competitive pricing and very friendly financing, uh, regardless of, of who our customers are and sort of their uh, their, their, their financing needs. Uh, we navigate our customers through many things uh, to list a few uh, launch options, small set, integration, licensing, et cetera. Uh, to introduce orbital launch services and OTVs, um, so we, we've talked about a few things here, uh, small sat, we've introduced, um, there's a growing demand in the small sat market. Uh, customers are you know, expecting more, I would say. Uh, they're seeking launch options that are tailored, flexible, dedicated, responsive, affordable, some are all of those. Um, there are several solutions that are meeting this demand. Uh, these include OTVs, which we'll talk about more later. Um, OTVs are offering custom and flexible solutions. So you're able to maneuver your satellite from you know, wherever you're inserted to another uh, uh, deployment orbit, often distant and often uh, hopefully precise, as well as host payloads in, in these uh, further orbits. There's also small launch vehicles, which are providing dedicated and responsive launch to customers and low cost rideshare that are providing launch services um, at a very affordable price uh, via uh, modern manufacturing reus reusability. Um, Space Flight has access to all of these solutions. We have partnerships with small launch vehicles, with low cost rideshare, and we have our own orbital transfer vehicles. So because of this, we're able to combine and configure all of these offerings um, for our customers uniquely to offer the best in class tailored launch solutions for them. This is a huge value that Space Flight is able to provide. Uh, to introduce Sherpa, uh, our orbital transfer vehicle, this started with rideshare um, and you know, it, it's gone on to a uh, hosted payload and, and sort of advanced maneuverability. And soon it'll be including uh, in-space services or additional in-space services, I should say. Um, we pioneered launch cost reduction through rideshare for serving customer needs with last mile delivery services right now. Um, we provide comprehensive support for hosted payloads and technology demos. Um, and in the future, we're gonna be moving to new uh, frontiers, we're moving beyond LEO very soon. We'll talk about that more later. And we're also gonna be providing in-space services very soon. I have a video here. Um, I'm running a little short on time, so I'm gonna skip this. This would have been an intro to Sherpa, but we'll talk through this uh, in the other slides. Uh, so here's a, a bit more on Sherpa. Um, it can do many different things. It can be a uh, ride share for multiple satellite deployments. Uh, it can be a shared or dedicated bus for hosted payloads, and it can be a kick stage uh, for launch vehicles if, if they so need. Uh, here's an overview of the Sherpa program. I'm not gonna read all of this, but I'll call out some uh, key parts here. Uh, so Sherpa's history, you know, I think we've talked about this a little bit. It started as a port expander, um, sort of opening up ride share to customers. Since then we've iterated on this vehicle as you're able to see on the bottom figure here, going from the port expander there, to a vehicle that had attitude control, to a vehicle with two different uh, propulsion types, electric and chemical, and then finally going to uh, next year, a very high energy um, chemical variant that's able to operate in cis lunar and geospace. Um, so sort of we, we've, we've gone through it all, and we've been at the front of all of it, and, and we continue to be uh, with, with, that, with that geo uh, cis lunar launch next year. Um, 
yeah, some reasons to choose Sherpa. We've talked about some of these already. Um, we're lowering costs to specific orbits. Uh, you don't have to use your own satellite uh, for propulsion. We, we, we maneuver you there. Um, multiple satellites uh, can, can be on one Sherpa, reducing the cost to space for all of them. Um, and we have many services that we're offering, including hosted payload and uh, on-orbit uh, services as well. The point of Sherpa um, or the Sherpa program was to maximize flight and schedule reliability, uh, minimize development timelines, and provide mission assurance all for our customers. Sherpa, uh, I, I would say what one of the, the core uh, or enabling technologies of the Sherpa is its ability to interface with launch vehicles. Uh, the same Sherpa uh, fits on all launch vehicles that, that, that we interface with uh, via the ESPA port or 24 inch uh, standard interface. Uh, spacer rings are also used, uh, or adapters are, are used uh, to, to uh, mount it to different ports. Uh, so this is a sort of a standard Sherpa interface. This allows flexible remanifest without launch schedule disruption. We're able to move Sherpa from one launch vehicle to another very quickly. Um, and we have uh, rapid payload and launch deployment processes because of this. Here's the Sherpa spacecraft family. We've talked about this a little bit already. These are the five different vehicles. We have the Sherpa FX, uh, which was that port expander, the Sherpa AC, which added uh, attitude control, the LT is the electric propulsion variant. The LTC is the chemical propulsion variant. And the ES is that higher energy or higher total impulse uh, variant for uh, geo and cis lunar missions. Um, yeah, here you'll see the timeline uh, from what, when these were launched, sort of when they got onto orbit. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this, this heritage soon. Um, yeah, here's some details on the Sherpa orbital transfer vehicle. Um, we've talked to some of this already. This is sort of you know how it was designed, some of the key uh, technical uh, features here, uh, you know, sort of where the development program is going. Uh, we're building off the success from those five OTVs. We're focusing on the AC, LTC, and ES. Um, we're improving the LTE, and we're going to be offering services, uh, including space situational awareness, do orbit and refueling, which we'll talk to uh, later. One other thing to call out is our R2A core development, core uh, deployment sequencer system. This was developed in-house. This is one of the key technologies for Sherpa. Um, this is how we deploy um, our, our satellites. And, and this is sort of, you know, one of the places where, where this program all started. To introduce the OTV market. Um, so OTVs are offering custom and versatile options for space access, uh, sort of opening up this, this uh, opening up space to, to many more people, or at least opening up uh, precise orbital locations to many more people. Um, one other thing to, to mention is, you know, what, right now OTVs are in LEO. Uh, this is now moving, our OTVs are becoming capable of, of moving to uh, and operating within MEO, GEO, and CISLUNAR, uh, and SHRP is at the, uh, at the cutting edge of this. Uh, OTVs are becoming more capable. They're meeting new markets and offering more complete solutions. Um, we, we'll talk about, and we've talked about already a little bit in space services, OTVs are going to be key here. Um, and I, I think just to introduce these next sections, uh, most commercially developed markets for OTVs right now are rideshare and hosted payload. Uh, to talk to rideshare a bit, uh, OTV rideshare is uh, sort of using vehicle maneuverability or the orbital transfer vehicle maneuverability to propulsion systems to deliver customers to distant and precise orbital locations. Um, we're able to deliver multiple customers to multiple different locations. We're able to do this with altitude, inclination, RAN, L10 change, any of it, and, and all of it. Um, what determines how maneuverable a vehicle is, is the propulsion system and the vehicle characteristics. Uh, Sherpa has been optimized to make it very maneuverable and offer the most value to our customers. Uh, at the bottom here, you're able to see uh, the CONOPS for, uh, I guess, one sequence of uh, Sherpa deployments where it is launched, uh, maneuvers, deploys one satellite, maneuvers again, and deploys another, and it can continue this many times. To talk a bit to uh, Sherpa's capabilities for maneuverability, we have a chart here showing the Delta V for Sherpa. Uh, you're able to see that the various uh, variants have different uh, Delta Vs, different maneuvering capabilities, with the most for Sherpa ES, the uh, high energy variant, and the least for LTC, which is mainly uh, chemical propulsion in LEO. Um, yeah, uh, sort of using these charts, you're able to understand sort of how, how Sherpa can maneuver to different orbits and, and sort of how far it's able to get from its insertion. Uh, here, this is sort of applied to show kind of altitude and inclination change you're able to get for different uh, payload masses with different Sherpa variants. Um, and similarly, uh, you're able to use this for LTAN or LTDN change, or RAN change, it's all the same really. Um, for uh, generally earth imaging or communication customers that are trying to get a specific phasing. Um, and Sherpa is able to create uh, pretty quick uh, LTAN uh, changes here. Some flight results for Sherpa. Um, we've sent uh, five vehicles to LEO. We have over 800 days on orbit. 46 customer satellites deployed from Sherpa with a 100% success rate across 34 events. Uh, we do imaging of our deployments for mission assurance. You're able to see two of those here. Uh, we've also operated six hosted payloads. You're able to see an image of an EP thrust run operation in the bottom left as well. We have three missions actively ongoing. Uh, to talk a bit to hosted payload use cases. Um, 
OTVs are able to provide hosted payload services, which makes uh, sort of getting to space very cost effective and, and, and efficient uh, for customers. Um, this is complementary to rideshare. So, you know, a hosted payload is able to cost share or, or share the cost of uh, getting to space, uh, including the cost of launch and, and, and the cost of the OTV with the other payloads on board. Um, this offers significantly less expensive space access than, than if you were to build your own satellite um, and also has very effective pricing for payload operations because you're able to have us uh, operate your payload for however long you want, especially if that's a short duration, it becomes a very efficient trade. Um, this is ideal generally for experimental and demonstration payloads, although we have many different kinds of hosted payload customers interested. Oh, and at the bottom there, you're able to see uh, similarly a, a con op uh, for hosted payload where we uh, launch, deploy one satellite, uh, maneuver again, and then uh, do hosted payload operations with our remaining hosted payloads. Some hosted payload specifications here, um, lead time of 12 months, mission duration of one year, payload mass between one and 200 kilograms, a max of 750, and then payload power is con ops dependent, but we've listed some values here. Important to call out, all of this is very flexible. We tailor our solutions for our customers. Here's some hosted payload success stories. Uh, we have three here, um, one an EP system. This was huge for Apollo Fusion. Uh, we demonstrated uh, the system in space, got them from 100,000 in sales to 100 or over 100 million in sales, contributing to their purchase for $50 million uh, from Astra. So this was you know, an incredibly successful demonstration. We have two others here as well, a Leo hosted payload platform uh, with Sherpa AC, and then a hosted payload and chemical propulsion system on Sherpa LTC. Uh, this is, I think, the last slide we have here, uh, which is right on time. Um, this is sort of the frontiers for orbital transfer vehicles, expanding into services with them. This is where spaceflight's next phase of growth is. Um, we're going from LEO uh, to beyond LEO, and we're going to broader uh, in-orbit services. Um, we're taking rideshare and hosted payload beyond LEO, uh, and then the services we plan on offering are uh, space situational awareness, coordinated surveillance, inspection, uh, as well as life extension and other things uh, similar to that relocation, manufacturing, ISAM, debris mitigation or removal, and also uh, providing uh, network nodes and edge processing and sort of similar features there. Uh, in this way, we're able to support mission needs and provide a complete uh, servicing product for, for our customers, sort of as, as we talked about in the beginning, not just getting our customers to space, but getting them around space and getting them out of space, making sure that they're able to focus on their core business and not have to worry about access to space and, and uh, all the details there. Um, so that's sort of all, all we have. I'm looking forward to questions. Um, yeah, thank you for, for your time. Perfect, wonderful. So thank you, Evan, for the presentation and explaining again uh, in detail how spaceflight is helping again the uh, the small sat customers to deliver their you know missions to to orbit. So uh, definitely uh, a great job for your company and uh, a lot of heritage as you discussed, right? So uh, a lot of launches and successful missions you've undertaken in recent years. So uh, a question to you from my side. Uh, can you describe some of the key regulatory and compliance requirements that companies operating in the small sat launch services industry need to navigate and how is spaceflight ensuring that they're staying within this, uh, again, uh, compliance regulations? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so there, there's, there's, um, there are so many. Uh, I, I think to talk to some of the uh, most critical um, ones, I, I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, uh, deorbit requirements. Uh, you know, so I, I think here, I'll, I'll go back to a, a previous slide, um, talking a bit to uh, services here, um, and even on that uh, space access slide from earlier, one of the uh, key things that, that, that people are talking about today is uh, debris removal or uh, sort of space sustainability. There's a lot of different words for it, but making sure that we aren't creating more space debris um, and hopefully removing the space debris that we have created. Uh, and sort of a, a, a key feature here or, or key re regulatory consideration is making sure that as we put satellites up, they do not stay up in space and, and create more debris, right? So we have uh, deorbit requirements um, on all of our satellites. Uh, so I think one way that spaceflight is, is meeting this is with our OTVs, we, we obviously uh, meet this requirement. We have um, very reliable systems that, that are deorbiting uh, with, within uh, required timelines. But on top of that, we're uh, sort of building out the services that our vehicles offer so that not only are we meeting this requirement, we're able to help our customers meet this requirement by providing deorbit services as well as active debris removal um, for, for debris that's already been created in space. Uh, so that, I would say that's one key one. There are many more. Um, there are many on the launch side. Um, yeah, there, there, there are tons of requirements on, on launch and, and logistics, um, sort of everything with, with rideshare and sort of getting access to space. There, there are so many there. I think I don't have enough time to speak to all of them, but we help our customers with everything along the way. We have you know, a, a fantastic legal department and, and we have tons of experience making sure that our customers get to space on the timelines that they want instead of getting tangled up in all of these regulatory and compliance processes. 
Perfect. Wonderful. So thanks for that. Another question that I have is uh, what are some of the potential market opportunities and challenges that Spaceflight is monitoring and, you know, well, that Spaceflight sees in the small cell phone service industry? Um, this is pretty much the question. So where, where do you think it's headed now into in the next five or 10 years? Sure. Um, so I, I think, and I, you know, I'm... <laughs> Obviously, I, I guess to toot our own horn, it's probably going back to this this slide here that, that we've already talked about a little bit um, mm -hmm. on, on the frontiers and sort of expansion. Um, we, we, you know, the problems that we are, you know, sort of predicting and, and expecting, we're, we're, we're building our products to meet those problems and, and solve those problems for our customers, right? Um, and so I would say there's there's two separate ways of looking at this. There's sort of um, the orbits that people are going to. Uh, right now, I would say that um, many people are in LEO and specifically in SSO or, or a sun synchronous orbit. This is um, in many ways uh, proliferated or, or, or on a different coin uh, commoditized with uh, access to a sun synchronous orbit becoming you know very frequent, very inexpensive and very common. Um, but you're going to see or you're already seeing people moving into uh, different orbits. You're going to see uh, more people going to geo in the near future, more people going into cis lunar space, um, including lunar orbits. And you'll also see even within LEO where people going to uh, different LEO orbits, including mid inclination and uh, orbits uh, sort of within that regime. And so you're going to see um, a lot of different uh, orbits opening up in the future. And uh, Spaceflight uh, has key partnerships with uh, various launch service providers. And uh, you know, I, I would say some creative solutions in place to get our customers to these different orbits at a similar affordable prices and, and, and with sort of similar flexibility um, and, and, and precision uh, in, in, in deployment. So I would say that's one place to look. And the other place is, uh, as we've talked about a little bit with these in-space services, um, people are going to be expecting a lot more I think done for them in space and expecting to do a lot less themselves in space. And so whether that's you know moving uh, satellites around for others or getting them out of space, um, and then I, I think there's sort of the even more exciting regimes of of making things in space with like manufacturing and assembly and robotics. Um, so there's there's I, I would say a, a lot of exciting things. Maybe one more thing to say. I, I think we're at we're at the hour, but one more thing to say is sort of where those overlap is services in these other regimes. So services that are going to be provided let's say in cis lunar space or in geo, um, whether it's, you know, providing network nodes in, in cis lunar space or, or, you know, other exciting opportunities, there's, there's I would say, still a lot of frontier left and uh, Spaceflight is, has a lot of services and, and products coming out to, uh, to meet these markets. So it's, it's definitely an exciting time. Perfect. So th thank you for that, Evan. And as we're now stepping into the panel also, uh, the, the one last question I will ask you, it's kind of in the theme of the panel as well. So maybe that can act as an introduction for that as well. So uh, how, how much of the uh, clients and the partnerships that uh, Spaceflight is doing is with the government, again, uh, how, government agencies and entities? Sure. Um, I don't know if I have a, a hard number for you right now. We do a lot of uh, work with I, the U.S. government? Is that what you mean? Or are you just saying governments in general? Uh, just in general. But uh, again, if it's specifically U.S., um, you know, that's that's fine as well. Yeah. So I, I, I can certainly say we, we do we do a lot of work with the U.S. government. Um, I didn't put that slide in here, but but we have, you know, a long history serving the U.S. government. Um, I, I would say our our, uh, our services and, and our missions are, are nicely split between um, government customers and, and, and commercial customers and uh, sort of I would say moving forward, we're keeping both markets uh, very much in mind and, and trying to find sort of like dual use technologies and areas of overlap and sort of how we're able to apply commercial solutions to governments um, and, and, and government customers. Uh, so we've you know, historically served them well um, and, and, and we sort of are, are building our products with, with, with both of these markets in mind. 